Hi, I'm Walter Reeves. How would you like to learn the secret of a lush lawn, a gorgeous, plentiful garden, an eco-friendly landscape, or even a healthy wildlife plot that attracts plenty of animals? The secret? Two words, soil testing. If you're an avid gardener like me, you may be asking yourself, why should I soil test? I've done fine so far. There are many reasons why it's a good idea to soil test. Even though you've done pretty well in the past, there might be room for vast improvement if you simply had the right information. Also, your current method of gardening might be harming the environment without you even knowing. Plants are like people in some ways. For good health, people must have nutritious food, supplying vitamins and minerals and other elements for their bodies. For plants to grow well, they must have the right kind and the right amount of nutrition. Too much of a nutrient may cause abnormal growth or waste money or even damage the environment. Soil testing can give you the knowledge you need to develop the proper fertilization program, including the type of fertilizer to use and the timing of application. This means no more guessing about what kind of fertilizer to buy. You won't be accidentally dumping unneeded fertilizer on your plants. Not only is excess fertilizer wasting your money, but it can run into nearby streams and ponds and lakes, causing damage to our ecosystem. Overfertilization can damage the ecosystem. What happens is the same nitrogen and phosphorus that you're applying to your land, to your plants, can run off into streams, ponds, and lakes. The algae is stimulated by these same nutrients, the same nitrogen and phosphorus. When the algae grow excessively, they can use up all the oxygen at night. When this happens, the whole system will crash. The algae die, the fish die. There's another threat from overfertilization. That is, the nitrogen you overapply can leach into the groundwater. If you have a drinking water well on your property and get your drinking water from this well, you can contaminate your own well with nitrate. When the wrong kind or amount of fertilizer is used, it can lead to poor vegetative growth and the exposed soil can erode easily. Soil erosion can damage nearby streams by burying the habitat of stream organisms with sediment. So now that you know how important soil testing can be to your plant's health and to the environment, you may be wondering, just how do I test my soil? Well, actually, it's very easy and inexpensive, but one of the most important steps is collecting the sample. A soil sample weighing about a pound is used to represent thousands of pounds of soil in your landscape or garden. Therefore, it's extremely important that soil samples be properly and carefully taken. Now, I'll show you how to take a sample. First, mentally divide your lawn or your garden into subsections based on the type of plant because different plants have different nutritional needs. Take soil samples in a clean bucket from each of these locations. For lawns, sample to a depth of four inches. For gardens and ornamentals, sample to a depth of six inches. The same principles used for gardens are good for sampling wildlife food plots. It's best to take soil samples several months before you establish a new wildlife plot by thoroughly mixing 15 to 20 soil slices that have been taken six inches deep. In already existing food plots, you can collect the soil sample four inches deep. After thorough mixing, place the soil in the container. Do not use sample bags or containers other than those provided by the laboratory. Fill the soil sample container to the indicated fill line with the mixed soil. Write the information requested on the soil container and on the soil submission form. At this point, the sample is ready. Bring the sample to your local extension office or mail it to the laboratory of your choice. There are well-qualified university and commercial soil testing laboratories located in each state. The most qualified labs usually participate in laboratory proficiency testing programs. At a typical soil testing laboratory, soil samples received from customers are carefully cataloged and prepared for analysis. 
the soil samples are then moved on for analysis of pH, phosphorus, potassium, and other nutrients that are essential for plant growth. Here are two contrasting soil test reports, one with very low levels and another with high levels. The soil sample with very low levels came from a forest that had not received any fertilizer or lime for many years, if ever. In contrast, this report is for a soil that has too much fertilizer and as a result has extremely high levels of phosphorus. Determining the best fertilizer rate depends on many factors, including the type of plant to be grown. Recommendations from a soil test laboratory are based on three things. First of all, it's based on a calibration. Calibrations are determined from many years of scientific research. Uh, for example, calibrations for pH are established from uh, soil plots that are set at different pH levels, and then for each plant, uh, the optimum pH is determined from how well the plants grow on those plots. The second item that's uh, used is the actual plant itself. Uh, for example, uh, acid-loving plants like azalea or blueberry require a pH of about 4.5 to 5.0. Uh, in contrast, alfalfa that might be grown in wildlife plots requires a pH of about 6.5. And the third thing that is needed in a recommendation is the actual laboratory result itself. So, you now have your soil test report back. Armed with this new information, you can accurately fertilize your soil. In most cases, your county extension agent can help you understand your report. For some plants, like a vegetable garden, the recommendations will be given as pounds of fertilizer per thousand square feet. An example recommendation is to apply 20 pounds of 1648 fertilizer per 1,000 square feet in your garden. Let's say that your garden is 80 feet wide by 50 feet long. This means that the area to fertilize is 80 times 50, which equals 4,000 square feet. So you have four 1,000 square foot areas within your garden. Therefore, the amount of fertilizer to buy would be four times 20, or 80 pounds of 1648. This fertilizer grade is available in most lawn and garden stores. Of course, in your garden, you'll usually spread fertilizer by hand, but if you have a lawn, the easiest way to apply the fertilizer is to set your spreader to a light rate, then pour in the fertilizer that's been recommended and go over and over the area until it runs out. Well, there's three numbers on a fertilizer label. These three numbers correspond to percent nitrogen, phosphate, and potash applied to your plants. Most inorganic fertilizers contain these nutrients. If you're an organic gardener, you can supply these nutrients through manure-based compost, bone mill, and similar materials. I hope we've convinced you about the benefits that soil testing can have for your garden, your landscape, or your wildlife food plot. Soil testing can give you the information you need to grow healthy, bountiful plants without wasting your time or money or harming the environment. For more information about soil testing, including a link to a soil test lab near you, go to www.soiltest123.com.